Hey everyone, Angelo here. Welcome to another design tutorial. Today, I want to discuss how to create custom motion paths with animation using Adobe InDesign. In this lesson, we'll apply it to a fictional corporate brochure and add it to images as well as a pop-up window. So let's get started. Okay, so I've opened up the fictional corporate brochure and there's two examples that I'm going to show you here on how to create custom motion paths to set animation to of your choice. I'm going to go to my layers panel first and just turn off all the layers at the bottom of this layout. We're going to hide them because you'll see in this example I have the window with information, a title, a button that um, an arrow that points up and a, an arrow that points down which essentially will be the open and close buttons and we'll get to those in a few moments. You'll see down below here I've grouped a text frame with the information that you want to have appear along with along with just a rectangle or a shape of your choice. Okay so I've grouped them because I want them to appear together once we set up the animation and the same goes with this here did you know the title along with the up button you'll see in my layers panel I've named that title frame okay so you'll have to group the up button with the title because those two will have to go up once we set the animation and then the close button the down arrow can stand on its own so I'm gonna click on the info box first and I'm going to go to my animation window and by now you should know that all your animation and your interactive tools and windows can be found by going to window interactive and they're all here the ones that you'll need for this lesson animation buttons and forms and timing which I have grouped all in the same window and have it on my side here okay so you can see I'm gonna click this and you can see it's called info box I'm gonna put my guides on and you'll see that I've created two guides in this layout, two horizontal guides, one up here and one over here. That's useful because when I draw out my motion path, that's where I want the endpoint to be, okay? So in this case, I'm going to use the line tool because this will be my motion path, custom motion path. And I'm going to roughly start in the bottom portion of, or sorry, the middle portion of the info box and I'm just going to drag out a line that goes to that guide that I just created there okay you could see it there perfect next up I'm gonna grab my selection tool and simply drag and collect the info box and the line that you just created okay that's important to collect both of them together and now normally if you were setting up a preset for an animation you would just click on this window, the info box, and then select a preset of, you know, fly in from the top or the, the bottom, left, right, whatever you wanted. But in this case, we're setting up a custom animation. So I have them both selected and I'm gonna go to my animation panel and in the bottom right hand corner, there's something called convert to motion path. I'm gonna click that and you'll see that now that, that line that we created the, using the line tool, that's now a path and it's showing me that it's going to animate upwards. Now it's important, um, important to note the direction that you start and finish the line when you're drawing it out will be the direction that the path will go in. So you noticed I started from the middle point and went upwards. That's because I wanted it to go up. Perfect. So you can see the preset now says custom and that's okay. Um, on page load, we'll get to that in just a second. I'm going to click on this title frame and do the exact same thing. Click the line tool and then just go ahead and create a line that goes right to that guide. Okay. Because we want them actually in this case, I want this line to go all the way to the top up here. So let me zoom in and finish that off right there. Perfect. Now that I have that line selected, I'm going to hold my shift key down and click on did you know. So I have that grouped, remember. 
I have that button and did you know grouped. And let's also create that into a motion path. So let's take a look. You'll see that because we created motion paths of those, they both go up. Okay, but we have, there's some more work to do here. Um, we have to set them to play together and we also will we'll set it up to open and close in just a few moments. Okay, so I've opened up my timing panel as well. You can see I have info box and title frame. Those are the two animations that we just set up. We have to set them so they play together because you noticed when I played it in the preview, one came in and then the other came in on page load. So let's go ahead and click info box, hold your shift key and click title frame and then just play them together by clicking that icon down below. And you'll see now they'll come in together. Now I do want to speed that up just a little bit because currently it's playing at one second. If I go back to my animation, so right now it's playing at one second. Let's make it 0 0.5, the duration. You can see that, hit enter. That was info box. Go ahead and click duration for, click the title frame and set the duration of that also to 0 0.5 seconds and hit enter. And you'll see now it comes in at a little bit faster pace. So when we click it to open, we want it to come in a little bit faster than one second. So that's good. Let's focus on buttons and forms now. I'm gonna scroll in here and double click to select the up arrow um, icon and we're gonna go to uh, the type and we're going to select a button. So we're gonna, we're gonna turn it, convert it from a, an object to a button. And in this case, I'm just gonna call it up arrow and the event will be on release or tap. The action will be animation. You can see animation info box. You can select that here and the option is to play. So that's good. Let's click action again and add a secondary animation action. Only this time we want to change the animation from info box to title frame. So when we click this button here, it's going to open info box and title frame. Um, there's one other thing I want to do is when I open this, I want it to, um, I want it to disappear. And so the only thing is we want to see when this opens is have the close button appear. Okay. To do that, you'll see what I mean in just a second to do that, go to actions and we want to show hide buttons and forms. Oh, before we do that, let's go up here and turn this guy into a button as well. And this is called down arrow. So be sure to set your buttons up before you start adding the actions and whatnot. It's important because you'll see when I click this now, there's an up arrow and a down arrow in the visibility. Okay. So what do I, what do I want this to do? I want the up arrow to be um, to hide when I click it, but I want the down arrow to be visible. Okay. Let's go back. Let's go up top here and set the same, the same actions to this. Okay. So I'm going to click on the down arrow and we've already created that into a button. The action will be animation info box. So you can select info box here, but the option is to reverse it. Okay. So we want the animation to be reversed when we click this button. So in other words, we want it to close. Let's go to actions and set another animation. This time it'll be title frame. And the option is not to play. It's to close reverse. Okay. Let's click on action again. You can see you can add multiple actions to a button. So this is good. We want to go to show hide buttons and forms. And in this case, we want the arrow up arrow to be visible and we want the down arrow to hide. Okay. Okay. Before we go any further, we have to take the on page load event off both of these animations. So let's click on info box first. And because we've already set up a button event, we don't need it to um, load on page load. So let's uncheck that and you'll see that the event for info box will only happen when we have that button trigger. 
click on did you know or title frame and let's uncheck on page load and we have to set timing to the button triggers as well so drive into both those buttons and the up arrow okay drive into that you'll have to double click it because these two items are grouped and let's go to timing and because this is a button event, we have to change the timing in this instance as well. So click on info box, hold your command key and click title frame. Shift or command um, will work. And let's go ahead and play those together. Let's go up, click on the down arrow and do the same thing. So click on info box, hold your command key or control if you're on Windows and click title frame and then go ahead and play those together. Okay, so let's give that a go now and see how it looks. There might be one more thing, actually there will be another thing. You can see up here that the down arrow is appearing here. I don't want that to be visible on page load either. So let's click it up and close it. Click it up and close it. So that works. Let's just go back to our down button here. I'm gonna click it and in the buttons and forms panel, just check this box here where it says hidden until it's triggered. So we will not see, we will not see the down arrow until, until it's triggered. So let's go ahead and try that again. Click up, you can see it's there and close it. Perfect. So now that we have that set up, let's go ahead now and start um, creating our other motion path animation down below. Okay, I've gone ahead and turned on the objects on the bottom portion of the layout. You can see in my layers panel, I have profile images, some text, bios to go with the images, and I have this white frame here that's covering up the window, the pop-out window. So when we open and we click, did you know, it'll come out from behind this white frame that we've created. So I'm just gonna hit Command Z and you see it's still there, perfect. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is actually gonna turn off the, um, let's go ahead and turn off the bios to start. And let's lock the white box, the frame. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here. Okay, to put that off to the side. And in this case, I wanna grab the pen tool because I'm going to create a custom path using the pen tool. So we use the line tool to create a custom path here on the pop-out window. In this case, we'll use the pen tool. So I'm gonna click that. And I want to start on the piece board. So ideally I want these, the animations, the images to come out from outside the page and then work their way into the position. So let's go ahead and maybe start it here. Use your guide as one of the points that you'll click on click there and then I'll click somewhere in the middle it doesn't have to be precise because you'll see that once we convert it into a motion path it'll lock with that image so I'm gonna go ahead and do that that's a good motion path for now grab your selection tool select the image with the path that you just created with the pen tool go to your animation window and it's the same process bottom right hand corner convert it to a motion path Okay, now there's one extra step. You see, because I've created it down below, what it's, what's happening is the path is now converted to, to do the same path, but shoot up all the way up here. So the duration, I want this to play at one second, that's fine, and I do want it to play on page load, that's good too. But in the properties drop down here, if you don't see this, it's right in the animation window about midway through. Click that drop down, and under the animate drop down, it's currently set to from current appearance. You want to set it to to current location. So then the animation will stop where you have the Im the image placed on the page. Okay. Now what I'll do here is I'll just delete these here. This one and this one because I want the paths to be identical. So I'll just go ahead and copy this by holding Alt and drag, and then hold Alt and drag. Okay, 
And then I would just go in and replace these images, which I'll do. This is easier than trying to, you know, um, create the same kind of path. So I'm just going to images and then I'm just going to replace these images. Okay, I've gone ahead and replaced the second and third image and they should all have the same custom motion path now. So you'll see they'll bounce in. This is on page load. That's at a duration of one second, which I find comfortable. You can have it come in at five sec 0.5 seconds, two seconds, whatever you desire. Let's go ahead and turn on the names, the bios, and let's add a fade in animation to those. So I'm gonna click on the first and the preset will be fade in. Let's click on the second, fade in, and third, also fade in. Okay, let's take a look at the finished product here. I'm gonna open up in the EPUB preview. You can see that the images come in with our custom motion path. The bios with the names came in, in a fade in. Let's test out the pop-out window. We open it, close it, and that works as well. So that's a simple way of creating custom animation using Adobe InDesign's Convert to Motion Path tool. If you enjoyed this tutorial, if you found it helpful, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button to get notified when new tutorials have been uploaded. If you'd like to learn more about interactive design, go ahead and click the playlist above.